I don't know any research like that. It would be great to see, but I really don't know. But presumably things do, do change across time, and that's where we need to understand more about other factors that change these expected connections. Uh, the, the question is, um, is it, I guess, is it better to be a parent who gets angry but sets appropriate limits, or is it better to be a parent who's warm and involved but doesn't set limits? And I would say either of those is worse than a parent who's warm and involved and sets appropriate <laughs> limits. And you'll probably get something in between. Certainly in terms of delinquent acting out behavior, you, you definitely don't want a parent who does not set limits. I once uh, rented a house from a psychiatrist. Well, I rented a house from a fellow who had rented the house to a psychiatrist just before I rented the house. And the psychiatrist didn't believe in inhibiting his young child who managed to chop down one of the supports to the back deck. And it was at that point that the landlord decided that, that despite any inhibition he might place on the child, he had to throw the psychiatrist out. I would say, that's too much nurturance and too little limit setting. In your, one of your early slides, you had three hypotheses. Is it imitation, uh, teaching, and genetics as an explanation for this uh, uh, behavior? Why do you exclude a, a fourth hypothesis with some interaction between the uh, heredity and the environment in which people find themselves? Uh, there clearly is. Ours is actually not a genetically informed research design, so we really couldn't carry out any of those kinds of analyses. But for, we've actually proposed an adoption study to look at those kinds of issues. And the review committees love it, but nobody wants to, to support it because it's too expensive. Um, but that, I think that's exactly true. The few adoption studies that have been done of these kinds of pro uh, processes show very strong gene by environment interaction effects. In fact, they tend to be much more powerful than anything else, any, any of the main effects. Thank you. F oh, one more. That actually is one of our hypotheses, is that if we have a target uh, young adult uh, from our population, of the original sample, who came from a family where the parents were, were pretty miserable parents, but he or she marries a partner who comes from a fairly good background that they in fact can learn, uh, we'll get one of two effects. We'll get a resiliency effect where the person with the disadvantaged background learns from the person with the advantaged background and good things happen. Or we'll get a vulnerability effect where the person from the bad background destroys <laughs> the advantage of the, of the, uh, of the partner. Uh, we don't know which one's going to occur, but that's exactly one of the hypotheses that we are planning on evaluating. Yeah, we do sometimes get differences in, in mother and father effects. We didn't in these present analyses. We didn't with the, with the three generation analyses because the sample is just too small to, to get it. Uh, with the romantic relationship analysis, we tested every interaction we could think of. Uh, sex of the original parents, uh, sex of the, uh, what the sex situation was between the partners, uh, and we just couldn't get any gender differences at all. We, we in fact, we, we got roundly criticized. This, this paper has been uh, um, republished. There's a, something, a journal called Prevention and Treatment, which is an online journal published by American Psychological Association. And they'll come out, they'll take an article that's been published recently in another APA journal that they find of interest, and they'll publish it and have three commentaries on it and uh, by experts in the field. And one of the experts that commented on ours was, 
why hadn't we carefully evaluated gender because it obviously was the most important thing in terms of these processes. Uh, in our response, we simply said he hadn't paid any attention to the fact that regardless of testing for gender interactions uh, and finding no differences, um, uh, how am I saying that? There, just were, there was just no indication that gender made a difference. Even though we all know men are from Mars and women are from Venus, in terms of these connections between the family of origin and these new romantic relationships, we just didn't find a, a, a gender difference. I'm sure it does, in, in, in part because it creates stresses on the relationships. And that, as our sample size increases, that's one of the things we'll definitely want to look at. Okay, wh which debate are you talking about? There are so many of them, I'm not sure which one you want to enter. But to right. Well, I, um, you know, I, I think, I think if, if, let's enter the debate about divorce and keeping families together and so on and so forth. Um, you know, one argument might be that, that uh, there should be policies that you keep a marriage together at all costs that children are doomed if a, if a and, and they'll be doomed to unstable relationships in their lives as adults uh, if, if a marriage doesn't stay together. And, and I would say our data are contrary to that, that, um, that kids can do okay as long as the parenting is maintained. I would certainly say that in, 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 in a situation of domestic violence or, or a situation where partners uh, just are making one another's lives miserable, there's no reason to believe that those people coming apart is necessarily dooming a child to an ineffective future, at least in terms of their ability to establish uh, romantic relationships as an adult. And, and that's not to say that I encourage divorce or anything like that. Uh, it, was, it seemed like it was uh, the game that everybody was supposed to play in the 1970s, and it was a growth experience. According to the, the professionals at that time, I don't think people hold that view so much anymore. Well, I think, I think this definitely says that, that education and parenting should start early and should be a standard part of the curriculum. That would be one of the things that might break the cycle that Carolyn was talking about earlier. How do you, how do you take a child from a, a home where the parents are not very effective as agents of socialization? How can you keep them from replicating those same behaviors in the future? Certainly educational programs uh, in parenting would be an important part of that. Well, thank you very much for coming.